In January 1942, when German warplanes suddenly appeared in the sky before Lieutenant Colonel Ivan Chisov, the 26-year-old Soviet navigator had just seconds to react. He was in an Ilyushin Il-4 bomber when the Nazi planes emerged out of nowhere, then launched an attack that sent his craft spinning out of control. Without much choice, Chizov leapt from the doomed plane and into the sky. As Chizov plummeted toward the earth from a height of 23,000 feet, he decided to wait to pull open his parachute. Enemy planes surrounded him, and he worried that if they spotted the blooming canvas, they would immediately attack and shoot him out of the sky. So Chizov made the stomach-dropping decision to wait as long as he could. There was just one problem. As he fell to earth, the lack of oxygen caused him to pass out. Unconscious and unable to pull the ripcord to deploy his parachute, Chizov plummeted in freefall toward the snowy banks below. Finally, he smashed into the ground at a speed of 118 to 150 miles per hour. But incredibly, Chizov wasn't crushed as he collided with the earth. Instead, the snow absorbed much of the impact, and Chizov bounced and then slid to the bottom of a ravine. Then, nearby Soviet cavalry rushed to his aid and found, to their astonishment, that he was still alive. He hadn't escaped his brush with death unharmed. Chizov had a broken leg, pelvis, and spinal injuries. However, he had miraculously survived. Chizov was quickly taken to the hospital and treated by doctors. But then, against all odds, he took to the skies once more. Undeterred by his fall from the heavens, Chizov was back flying missions against the Nazis within three months. As incredible as this story was, Chizov wasn't the only soldier to survive such a dizzying fall. Other airmen like Alan McGee of the U.S. Air Force and Nicholas Alkamade of the British Royal Air Force survived similar falls straight out of the sky in the midst of war. Each of these men plummeted more than 15,000 feet and somehow managed to survive. And stories like theirs aren't even limited to wartime. In 1971, 17-year-old Julian Kupke survived a fall of 10,000 feet when her plane was struck by lightning over the Peruvian rainforest. Kupke woke up in the jungle with minor injuries and was able to hike to find help. The very next year, flight attendant Vesna Volovic fell even further, an astounding 33,000 feet, after an explosion in the baggage compartment tore through her plane as it was flying over Czechoslovakia. Today, we'll be discussing people who have fallen from mind-boggling heights, and most, though tragically not all, managed to survive. These are their remarkable stories. You're listening to History Uncovered, brought to you by the digital publisher All That's Interesting, where we explore the uncharted corners of the natural world and the world past. I'm All That's Interesting staff writer Kalina Fraga. And I'm All That's Interesting staff writer Austin Harvey. Today, we're diving into the incredible stories of people who fell out of the sky and lived. Although one of them actually didn't live, but most of them did oh. live. <laughs> <laughs> they did all fall out of the sky, though. More they did. specifically, out of airplanes. Yes. Moving and through the sky. You can chalk this up. I feel like during a lot of these recordings, I'm like, and that's my worst fear. But this is definitely up there. What? Falling out of an airplane? Yeah. Airplane crashes in general. That's fair. That's falling fair. from a great height. Although I guess I should be encouraged because these people survived. Yeah. Some with pretty minor injuries, too. Yeah. Look at it that way. It's like an optimistic tale. Yeah. Except for that one person who did die. Right. Yeah. Everyone else. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Well, we can get started with the person who fell the most. Is that how you organize this most least? I think so. Well, I ordered. Yes, I did. Nice. I organized it by the, like the two biggest ones and then war survival and then like kind of three more random uh, cases. Right. So the first one, she fell from the like insane height of 33,000 feet, which I can't even like wrap my mind yeah, around. I can't like I don't have a good. It's a lot. Pic- it's picture it's of what very that is. High. I was about to ask. I was about to ask if there are any buildings that tall. And I was like, no, you idiot. No, there aren't any buildings that tall. No planes would hit them if they were that tall. Yeah, you're exactly <laughs> right. Maybe in the future there'll be sky cities, but we're not Maybe. quite there yet. Anyway, her name was Vesna Volovic, and she was born in Serbia. And how did she get into an airplane? She was a flight attendant. 
which came about by chance. She saw a friend in her uniform and thought, well, why couldn't I do that? So she decided to become an air hostess, which I, don't, I think is now an arcane kind of term. But <laughs> in 1971, she applied for position with JAT Airways, which was Yugoslavia's national flag carrier and the country's largest airline. Oh. As she was applying, she knew that she had low blood pressure and that this could work against her. Um, and this fact is important later, so hold on to it. During her, her medical exam, she chugged a bunch of coffee to get her blood pressure up. And nice. it worked, and, sh- and she was hired. So she'd only worked as a flight attendant for like eight months, when in 1972, she's 22 years old, she's called up for JAT Flight 367, which is set to fly from Stockholm to Belgrade with a stopover in Copenhagen. And this was actually, she wasn't supposed to be on this flight. It was for a different Vesna, but she'd never been to Denmark. So she was like, I might as well just take this assignment. Uh, fair enough, yeah. So she decided to jump on this opportunity to go to Denmark. And on January 26, 1972, the flight took off from Copenhagen as planned. But 46 minutes into the flight, there is an explosion in the baggage compartment. Oh, wow. Yeah. Do they know what caused it or was it? It's actually, they thought at first they knew what caused it. I'll get into that in a little bit. But there's like some confusion. In any case, something exploded and the plane broke apart in the air. Again, it's 33,000 feet, actually a little bit more. They were over Czechoslovakia at the time. And Vesna Volovic has no memories of the crash. Her her last memory is greeting people as they got onto the plane. But investigators believe that when the plane broke apart, she was in the back and a food cart like slammed into her and pressed her into the into the wall. So she was like pinned. And as other passengers were being sucked out of the plane, she was like held in place. Oh, geez. Wild. And her low blood pressure might have helped keep her heart from bursting as she hit the ground. Wow. Also wild. She got lucky in like several other ways too, because when she landed, the first person to discover this crash was a World War II medic. And she was, I mean, alive, but she had two broken legs. So I guess both her legs were broken. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Three broken vertebrae, a fractured pelvis, broken ribs, and a fractured skull. But incredibly, she's still wearing her uniform. Only her stiletto heel had been broken off in the impact, which is sort of wild. Wow. That's crazy. It's insane. The uh, other people on that plane did not fare as well, it sounds like. No, she's the only survivor. Yeah. Jeez. When she came to, she asked for a cigarette, which is pretty baller. Yeah. And then within 10 months, she was walking again, which is also pretty incredible. Yeah. She said that her recovery was due to a childhood diet that included chocolate, spinach and fish oil sounds like popeye that sounds right where is she from serbia yeah that sounds right yeah <laughs> so at the time people thought investigators thought it was a the explosion had been caused by a briefcase bomb which is planted by a croatian separatist group more recently this one study in 2009 said that maybe the plane had been shot down by the czechoslovakian air oh force but this is like sort of a uh, no one's really sure. 1972. Why, why would they even be shooting planes down in Czechoslovakia? <laughs> Cold War stuff, I guess. All uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another incredible part of this story, I think, is that despite this trauma, she wanted to go back to being a flight attendant afterwards. I mean, she didn't remember it, which I guess is best case scenario. I really, guess, the event of any tragedy. You would think that like your subconscious would. I don't know. There'd be something like deeper down. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, the airline didn't want her to be a flight attendant again. So she got an office job. Uh, like, like she's maybe. bad luck. Yeah. <laughs> bad publicity. They're like, oh, no way. You were on that plane that blew up. Obviously, <laughs> you're the problem. <laughs> right. Yeah. You think she'd be like, good luck. But yeah, she continued to fly. She was not afraid of flying afterwards. Wow. Which again is pretty nuts. I know people who've had, you know, less extreme experiences on airplanes, way less extreme experiences that are pretty frightened of flying. Yeah. I mean, yeah, people get scared just by hitting like turbulent. Yeah, right. Not her. She died in 2016 at the age of 66. So lived a long life, like 40 more years after the yeah. plane exploded. That's pretty, that's pretty young still, though. 66. Yeah. It's all that chocolate. Yeah, right. <laughs> Finally <laughs> caught up. up to her eventually. Yeah. So she holds the record for like the longest fall to the ground. And survived free fall. Yeah, 33,000 feet. Yeah. I looked it up. The world's tallest building is about 2,300 feet tall. So, wow. so it's way taller. We're talking, yeah, t- uh, way like bigger. 10 times as big. Yeah. Wow. 
Ugh, that makes me like, ugh, don't like that. Humans aren't meant to be like that high up, you know? No, no. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> anything really is. Like yeah. How high, how high do birds fly? Uh, birds fly between 2,000 to 5,000 feet. Uh, 20,000. Hmm. So they get up there, but not yeah, as but up there. The Ruppel's griffin vulture has been spotted flying at 37,000 feet. Is that the, the record holder among birds? I believe so. The bar-headed goose was seen flying over the Himalayas at heights of nearly 28,000 feet. Hmm. But most of them do not go that high. It'd be like cold up there. Birds don't have a lot of like, well, I don't know, I guess they stay warm in other ways. I was going to say birds notoriously fly south when things get cold. (laughs) They do not like it. So this next one was not as big of a fall, but it was still a pretty big fall. It's 10,000 feet. Um, and her name was Julianne Kupke. She was a German teenager. She was born in Peru, but her parents were Germans. They were zoologists and they, you know, were studying wildlife and living in the jungle. So she kind of grew up knowing how to survive in extreme situations. She said, I grew up knowing that nothing is really safe, not even the solid ground I walked on. The memories have helped me again and again keep a cool head, even in difficult situations. So that was good that she had that because this was a very difficult situation. On Christmas Eve, 1971, she's 17 years old. She boards a Peruvian airline with her mother um, to visit her father. And the flight's a very short flight. It's only an hour, but 25 minutes in, they fly into a thunderstorm, which you do not want to do. Apparently, that's very, very, very bad. Yeah? Yeah. So they're sitting there. The plane is shaking. The bin's are flying open and like Christmas presents and luggage just falling out. And at first her mother says, hopefully this goes all right. But then a lightning bolt struck the plane's right wing and the aircraft starts to fall apart. And her mother changes her tune very quickly and says, now it's all over. Oh, wow. And, yeah. <laughs> really encouraging words of wisdom there, mom. Well, for most people, it like was all over because the well, plane sure. is falling apart. Cupkey finds herself falling through the air. She said, the next thing I knew, I was no longer inside the cabin. I was outside in the open air. I hadn't left the plane. The plane had left me. Uh, so she in the middle in, of a thunderstorm, too. In That's the middle of a thunderstorm, yeah. Intense. I think the, one of the uh, like most chilling things about this is that she's strapped into this bench. It's spinning around as it falls, but she's conscious. And when she looks down, she's conscious and like alert enough to notice that the trees look like heads of broccoli. So she can see as she's falling, Ooh. which is like, ugh. she eventually blacks out, which is what usually happens. Yeah. These high altitudes. And when she comes to, she's actually not that injured. She has a broken collarbone, a sprained knee, cuts, and one eye is swollen shut. And she lost her glasses, which is a detail that like... I don't know. Imagine like landing in the jungle and then not only are you injured yeah. and alone, but you can't see like horrible. Uh, yeah. And you only have one working eye to begin with. So, yeah, that's great. I, it sounds like she like being strapped to that bench was kind of what helped. Must have her. helped. Yeah. Like it right. probably broke some of the impact when she fell. Yeah. She's lucky because she has been kind of instructed on how to survive in the jungle. And she knows that her father once told her that if you're lost, you should follow flowing water downstream because it will often lead to civilization which is a good survival tip i think yeah that yeah. is good to know so she she finds a well and starts to walk it walk alongside it and she comes along like bodies as she's walking Ooh. which is pretty ugh. she said what i experienced was not fear but a boundless feeling of abandonment which i can imagine she's alone in the jungle for 11 days surviving mostly on water river water and then eventually comes across um some peruvian loggers who bring her back to civilization yeah Woof. she says that life afterwards was was hard I mean, her mother had died and some press reports were pretty like outlandish and not very kind but she eventually went back to the crash site for the Werner Horzog documentary Wings of Hope which she said was therapeutic interesting yeah yeah that's a uh, man yeah it's pretty incredible not only to, to survive the fall but then to survive like being in the jungle for 11 days injured yeah. and alone and what in what should have just been an hour-long flight like that's like you know they say planes are like the safest form of travel because i one i don't agree with that i think trains probably would be safer but mm. definitely safer than cars because 
people who drive are dumb. Yeah. And like, right. planes don't have to account for other generally other pilots in the air. You think like a one hour plane flight, that's like the safest hour of your life. Like, right. In any Maybe other it's like situation. The kind of thing, you know, they say like most car accidents happen like two miles from home. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's the same with planes. Maybe like the longer it is. Oh, maybe. The safer it is. I, I could see that. I don't know. You take uh, more safety precautions when you're going the distance. Yeah. But also these like smaller, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about someone else um, in a few minutes, but these smaller planes seem like the ones that usually are, have troubles, like in bad yeah. weather. Yeah. Probably low cost stuff yeah. as well. Exactly. I, was, I don't know why I was expecting more of these. And maybe there are, because we're only on two of stories. I was expecting it to be more like single person or two person, like small private planes mm, not like big planes full of not people. like yeah, yeah. Actual, like that's passenger. like even more horrifying that it's big planes and not yeah yeah because you're supposed to you're supposed to feel safe on those ones yeah The next set of people all survived falling out of planes in Europe, and they all survived it during World War II. This first guy I mentioned in the introduction, but he was a Soviet airman who was basically attacked by Nazi pilots. He jumped out of his plane. He wanted to wait to deploy his parachute because he thought it would attract attention. Right. And then he passed out and he smashed into the ground oh, and like God. incredibly survived anyway. Jeez. I know. And then he went and flew more missions. So, you know. Fearless. Yeah, his name was um, Ivan Shizov. Yeah, I see your note here. He hit the ground 118 to 150 miles per hour. Yeah, from 23,000 feet. I don't know why. I guess I thought you'd be going faster than that. Well, in any case, he, he survived to live another day. That's crazy. The next guy is an American airman named Alan McGee. And in January 1943, he was on a mission to bomb German U-boats near Lorient, France. It was his seventh mission ever, and his plane was hit. And he was thrown out of the plane before he could put his parachute on. Which seems like he should have been wearing it the entire time. But I'm not really sure what the protocol is. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you're a war fighter, it feels like you should just kind of be ready to right. bail at any moment. Well, he was not quite ready. But as he's flying through the sky, he says that he said a prayer. I don't wish to die because I know nothing of life. And someone was listening because he fell 22,000 feet onto the glass roof of the Saint-Nazaire railroad station. Whoa. Fell through the the roof and the rescuers found him on the floor. He was really badly wounded. His arm was nearly torn off, but he was alive. And he was sent to a POW camp where he was treated well. And he said, I don't know how I got there, but here I am. Thanks to God. Yeah. That's crazy yeah it's like landing in the snow like chizov did i could see that you know yeah helping yeah. survival crashing through the glass roof Ooh. of a train station yeah. that seems less likely that you would you'd live i don't know why i was surprised by the fact that german doctors treated him i was like yeah that's what they do like they take prisoners of war and keep them alive most of the sometimes. time sometimes i mean the Germans like, weren't known for their... I was going to say, yeah, that was Nazi Germany. So that's really... That's strange to me that they bothered to fix him up. Maybe because he was in like Nazi-occupied France. I don't know if that right. made a difference or not. Well, the third guy, it's kind of nice. We got a Soviet, an American, and this guy's British, Nicholas Alchemade. He was part of a bombing raid over Berlin. And on their way back to base, they were attacked and his plane caught on fire. Um, The problem was everything was on fire, even his parachute. So he had, you know, he could either stay in his burning plane and burn alive or jump. So he decided to jump. Fair. He fell 18,000 feet at 120 miles per hour. And like the the Soviet airman, he woke up in the snow. The snow like helped save his life. The snow, I guess, and the trees had cushioned his fall. And he only had a sprained knee and burn wounds. Which wow. is incredible. Like, so it was really, really deep snow. And like the pine that, forest, I guess, helped as well as he like plummeted to the earth. That's insane. They do say like when people get picked up by tornadoes that you're supposed to, when you're thrown from it, make your body go limp because oh. that could like helps with the impact. Uh huh. That kind of makes sense. Yeah. So I guess in all of these instances, because they black out, that might contribute as well. Mm hmm. Because yeah. if you're like tensed up and you're about to hit these trees. Right. Or if you're like resisting, to, that's probably yeah. like, yeah, that would 
be damaging. In any case, he he was found by the Germans. They could not believe the story, but there was no parachute <laughs> yeah. nearby. <laughs> so they believed him. He was also sent to a prison camp and survived the war, even yeah. so. So those were like kind of the war people. And then the last three we'll talk about are all a little bit different. The first one is the one guy that did not survive falling from a great height. Uh, his name was Keith Sapsford. Uh, he was only 14. And uh, he was living in Australia. And he was kind of he, he was at this institute for troubled children when he ran away, went to the airport, allegedly wanted to see the world. And he snuck into uh, the wheel well of a plane bound for Japan. Yeah. No, but when the plane no, took no. off, the wheel well opened and he fell 200 feet to his death. What's really eerie about this, we, we have this uh, article on the site that there was a guy just taking pictures of planes at the airport. And he caught this moment on camera, him falling. Not oh, like the impact, wow. I don't think, but just like the him in the sky falling. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Man, that's fu it's so oh, not funny, but, you know, interesting or ironic that this is the shortest fall of all of these. Right. Like I guess just you 200 feet. land on the tarmac like it's hard. It's not like yeah. snow. And I mean, don't get me wrong. 200 feet is still like very high up. Yeah. But yeah, that's crazy. Wow, that's such a shame. Some people have survived sneaking into like wheel wells of airplanes or somehow. But I guess experts think that he would have probably died from cold and lack of oxygen. Even if yeah. the wheel well hadn't opened and he'd fallen. Um, so that's the, our one guy who, who didn't make it. This next story is about a woman named Annette Herfkins. It's also a little bit different because she didn't actually fall out of the plane, but she survived a plane crash. She was with her fiancé in Vietnam in November 1992, flying to a beachside resort. And it was an old Soviet plane. They were not very long into the flight and uh, it crashed. And everyone died, including her fiancé. But she somehow survived. She had 12 broken bones in her hip and knee. Her jaw was hanging loose. Ugh. One of her lungs had collapsed. But she wasn't wearing her seatbelt. And investigators later thought that maybe that had saved her because the other passenger seatbelts had, like, crushed their ribs God. and lungs. Which is really interesting because I, I remember hearing somewhere, and this might be, like, not true, but someone told me that it, you have to wear your seatbelt in planes because if you don't, like, and a plane crashes, your feet will get chopped off like you'll slide forward oh yeah so then that image stuck with me but i don't know yeah that was when was it 92 92 yeah i wonder if they've like redesigned airplane seat belts since then well and this was like an older soviet plane as well so i mean it's horrible because she was with her fiance and and he Ugh. died and when they crashed the fiance was dead but a couple other people were not quite dead so she was there with them kind of listening to them like go quieter and quieter and quieter oh. and then she was all alone and she was able to survive because she pulled insulation material out of the plane and used it to collect water and drank water from that and that helped wow. her survive that for is eight days. some smart thinking i know she has a pretty incredible story because she like uh, survival experts later were like she did ex everything exactly right where she didn't panic she wasn't like crying for her fiance she knew she had to stay calm and in the moment and not like worry about things that hadn't happened yet so she was like if a tiger comes and eats me we'll deal it with that if it happens we'll you know like when the, when the tiger gets here yeah <laughs> just focus on like breathing and kind of just you know your present moment and eventually rescuers got to her and and she lived and she wrote yeah. a book about it later wow yeah this final guy is kind of an odd case. His name is Frain Salik. Uh, he's Croatian. And he claims that he had a number of close calls with death, including in 1963. He says he was on his first flight ever when one of the plane's doors flew open. And he claims one minute we were drinking tea and the next the door was ripped open and the flight attendant was sucked into midair followed shortly by me. So he's saying that he and the flight attendant were sucked out. Okay. He claims that the pilots and 17 other passengers were killed by this, I don't know, malfunction, I guess, um, and that he survived by landing on a haystack. But there is no evidence of a plane crash happening hmm. that year. And he's, he has some other kind of like tall tales that are difficult to verify. So whether or not he actually survived from any height at all is uh, up in yeah. the air, one could say. Yeah. I will say to his defense, he did just say the door flew open, not that the uh -huh. plane crashed. I think the plane did crash 
Okay. I mean, that's part of the story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, because I was like, if the plane didn't crash, but people just got sucked out of it, technically, well, I guess there would the be no evidence were of a plane crash. Apparently oh, killed. right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Someone yeah. has to pilot the plane. Yeah, so like I said, chalk up these stories to like worst fears of mine. Not good. I know I said I would be like uh, try and look at this positively. Like, well, look, these people survived, but it, uh, most people on these flights did die. So yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So it's still yeah. not not exactly <laughs> an optimistic outlook on this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. The survival stories. I just don't even know what i would i i I can't believe i can't believe how uninjured some of these people ended up being i know i mean they're able the german teenager cupkey like she's able to like walk for days she was fine some of these these airmen like like they were hurt but yeah i mean the one guy almost lost his arm but he didn't yeah but you just kind of think like falling from that height you're just gonna kind of hit the ground as a puddle right yeah you don't yeah like I said, especially when you have one kid who fell 200 feet, which is comparatively minuscule, but that was enough to kill him. Or you look at, I mean, even people who jump from like the Golden Gate Bridge, you know, right. the, it's definitely not that high up comparatively. Mm-hmm. It's just insane the way bodies work. I guess most of these people had some kind of, they had snow they landed on right. or like uh, Cupkey was tr- strapped into this bench. Right, right. The flight attendant was sort of like pinned in place in the plane so she wasn't quite like in the air. Like the, so these like random things happened that kept them from free falling entirely. I think the one who crashes through the glass ceiling of the <clears throat> train station is pretty That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, that's insane. That's borderline unbelievable. <laughs> Because can you imagine being like in the train station and oh, this guy just falls through? You? <laughs> yeah, what the hell? I, mean, I guess you're like, it's it's the war. You've probably seen all sorts of horrible things. And yeah, the, the more surprising part is when he gets back up. <laughs> like, God, yeah. You know, zombie movies hadn't come out yet. But if they had, that would have been a moment to panic for sure. I guess there's probably like a lot of adrenaline involved, too. Or like I said, blacking out like the way your body goes limp. Can, mm-hmm. um, someone on Cora asked. When people are about to try to crash, they say brace for impact. But in the Marvelous Feats show, I guess a show called Marvelous Feats, said being limp during an impact will be more likely to survive in case of tornadoes. Hmm. So I guess like passing out then does right. help you. Be- so yeah, because your body just goes fully limp. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Hmm. Ugh. How grim. Yeah. Yeah. Well... I mean, it's like you said, this from a certain angle, this is like an optimistic set of stories. And from another angle, it's it's less optimistic. Yeah, it dep- yeah I guess it really just depends how you want to look at it. Depends where you're sitting in the airplane. Yeah. 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 I don't think there's a uh, I don't think this is going to change anyone's opinions about flying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, like we said, I mean, there's so many flights per day that I don't want to like curse myself because I'm about to get on an airplane in like a month. But they're pretty <laughs> safe. <laughs> they're pretty safe, usually. Yeah. But anyway... Those are the stories of some people who have survived incredible things. And one guy who didn't survive. Yeah. Yeah, Sorry, Keith. But you can't not mention that story because that's crazy. Yeah. Well, the photo is like really eerie, too. Yeah. 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 That's on the site. Yeah. Anyone listening, Google his name. Keith Sapsford. I believe, actually, when you do so, we are the first result. But that might just be because I spend so much time on our website. I would be surprised. No, it's true. We are the first result when you Google Keith Sapsford. So, so check it out. We got the photo. The photo's right there. So you can see that and read the article as well. Yeah. Learn all about this poor kid. Next time is Roland Doe. He's related to the exorcist, right? Yes. The yeah. story who inspired William Blatty basically to write. Nice. That's coming up next week. Yeah. And then we'll talk about who killed JFK. Dun, 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 dun. And then History Happy Hour back on the 29th after a break. Yeah. And then it's December, which is, ugh, how ugh. did that happen? Time. Yeah. If you want to read about some people who fell out of planes, all that's interesting.com, we got the stories there. Sure do. If you want a little preview of what's to come next week, you can read the article on Roland Doe. All that's interesting.com. We got the stories. I think that should <laughs> our be our new tagline. New tagline. <laughs> 
<laughs> like we got the stories. Like, uh, like Arby's, right? We got the meat. Uh huh. We got the stories. Yeah, you can read the stories. You can also join our newsletter by going to allisinteresting.com slash sign up or become a member at allisinteresting.com slash membership. Write into us here at the podcast via email by going to podcast, not going to, by addressing your email to podcast at allisinteresting.com. We'd love to hear from you guys uh, feedback or just write in to tell us which stories you want us to cover or just send like a picture of like a little baby chicken I, whatever you want to send it's my <laughs> a baby chicken yeah, yeah. that'd be that'd be cute yeah just say hello um love to hear from people you can also leave us a voicemail if that's more your style the number is 929-526-3029 that's that's that that's that that's that it's yeah. friday and we're like running on empty but that's that <laughs> <Yeah>. and <laughs> Remember, all it's interesting.com. We got the stories. We got the stories. Till next time. See ya. Ah!